So maybe you've seen the matter label on a box at the store or heard about it as something you should do with your smart home, or maybe you've actually tried matter. You know a little bit more about it, but you're still confused about how all the parts of it fit together. In this video, I wanna clarify a bunch of misunderstandings about matter and help you decide if it's a good choice for your smart home. And if you've tried Matter out years ago and ran away from all these bugs and problems, well, you might wanna reconsider that decision because recent software updates have improved it a lot. I'm Eric Wielander, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I've been an app developer on Apple Platform since 2011 and building out my smart home here on YouTube since 2018. So if you're into Apple or smart home tech, consider subscribing. Now, Matter is a smart home standard that means that devices that support Matter can connect to any smart home system that also supports Matter. So you no longer have to worry about, oh, will this work with Apple Home or Amazon Alexa or Google Home or Samsung Smart Things or Home Assistant or whatever else. You just look for the Matter label on the box and you know that it should work with your smart home, at least in theory. And Matter as a standard actually has a group behind it, the CSA, which maintains it. And they require that in order for companies to put that Matter label on their box, they have to go through a certification process and a testing process to prove that their products work reliably. So hopefully, especially with newer versions of the Matter standard, the Matter label won't just mean compatibility, but also means something about stability and reliability of those products. And of course, stay tuned to the channel because I'm sure to tell you when Matter products work very well and when they don't quite add up. Now, all these Matter platforms that you might add your accessories to use something called a Matter controller. You might have heard that term. And each Matter controller is really specific to that platform. For example, an Apple TV or a HomePod or HomePod Mini work as Matter controllers for your Apple Home. You can't just use a HomePod Mini as a Matter controller with another smart home platform like Google Home. And in order to start using Matter with Apple Home, for example, you do need to have one of these controllers active on your network. And Apple has a page where they detail all the compatible devices that can be Matter controllers, and I'll link that in the description. Now, we'll talk more about requirements for your smart home in just a minute, but what does a Matter controller actually do? It sends commands, of course, to the Matter devices or accessories on your network, like turn on or set the light color to red at 50% brightness or cool the home to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. And obviously different device types support different types of things that can be set. And the initial version of Matter 1.0 that launched back in 2022 supported most common device types like smart outlets, lights, door and motion sensors. And each new version of Matter since then has added not only bug fixes and stability improvements, but also sometimes new device types like robot vacuums or even some smart appliances. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing because depending on specific versions of the software you have, let's say running on your Apple devices or other software, you might have some of these supported device types or you might not. It depends on what these platforms have done to update to the newer versions of Matter. So unfortunately, this whole idea of the label just means it's all compatible is a little bit more confusing when it gets to these niche devices. A lot of times the smart home platforms like Apple have documentation saying what kinds of devices they support with different OS versions. So it should be pretty easy to figure out if you can get your dishwasher or robot vacuum to work with your preferred smart home system. Now you might hear someone like myself call Matter devices accessories. That's because Apple has long called devices for their HomeKit platform as HomeKit accessories. And whether you call them devices or accessories, it's really easy to add them to your smart home. You just open up the app, like the Apple Home app, hit the plus button to add a new accessory, and then scan the Matter code. Now, this is a little bit of an oversimplification of the process, but this QR code or set of numbers you get to add the Matter device is a key that helps set up some basic encryption 
between that device and the rest of your smart home. So it makes it a lot harder for someone to snoop on your smart home activity because all the traffic is encrypted. And a lot of it, if not all of it, is local to your home. You're not needing to make as many calls out to the internet to get things done inside your home. Now what happens during this process, let's say you're using your smartphone, well that might use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to connect directly to that smart home accessory. Give that smart home accessory some details about what it needs to connect to your smart home and then it will flip back to your basic home network and then watch for this device to appear on your smart home. And then if something goes wrong in that process, it'll of course throw an error and you can reset the accessory, give it another shot. Now that your accessory is set up in Apple Home, maybe you also wanna have it set up in something like Amazon for working with your Amazon Echo and your HomePod Mini. Well, that's something in Matter called multi-admin. And this has gotten a lot better with newer software updates where basically inside of the app that you use for your Matter setup like Apple Home, you can go and turn on pairing mode for that Matter device. And this opens up the option to add that device to an additional smart home system. And then this new smart home system can see things like device status of whether the light is on or not, but it's not gonna see the same accessory names or room names or automations. Those are all specific to the platform that you use, except for maybe certain cases where you have bridged accessories, like let's say a Philips Hue bridge or home assistant that might talk to both. Those might carry over some names, but that's a topic for another day. Now I mentioned earlier that to use a Matter device with your Apple Home, you need a Matter controller from Apple like a HomePod Mini or Apple TV or full-size HomePod to run those Matter commands. Well, if you're using a device that connects with Wi-Fi or Ethernet, then you'll need to be sure and turn on IPv6 on your home network. This is especially true maybe if you set up your Wi-Fi a few years ago. You don't need to go out and buy new hardware per se to get IPv6 to work. You just wanna do some searching for where do I find that preference in my router's preferences to turn on IPv6 on my home network? Because that's how Matter communicates. If you use IPv4, it's not gonna work at all, and you probably won't be able to add any devices to begin with. Now, if you do work remotely from home and you connect to a company VPN, especially maybe an older company VPN, you might wanna double check with your IT department that it's okay to turn on IPv6 on your home network Theoretically, it shouldn't mess with anything, but it's always good to be safe if you use that for your job. But I think all this trouble, all these terms, understanding all these different components, it might seem kind of daunting at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually really straightforward. And I think it's worth investing the time and money to move to Matter as you look to make your smart home because the way I like to look at a lot of technological decisions is you want to invest the time and the money into the things where the tech companies you're working with are paying the most time and attention themselves. And things that are side projects or get less attention tend to be places where there are lots of bugs and issues. Some people might say that even about Apple Home itself over the years, but I think that's changing. And companies like Apple are much more focused on making sure that Matter devices work well with their new versions of software than they are with other kinds of, let's say, HomeKit specific devices. So while there are a few notable exceptions, like at least at the time of filming this video, Lutron Caseta is an amazing smart switch system that does not support Matter. Otherwise, I'd say if you have the choice, go with a Matter version of a product as opposed to something that's not Matter compatible because you'll have the options to use it in multiple smart home systems down the road. It's where a lot of the industry and the companies are going and focusing and if you wanna leave that tech behind when you move out of that home, then maybe the next person can use it how they want to. Now, this video is actually part of an ongoing series on my channel where I talk about what you need to know about a specific topic. And it just helps you get up to speed on smart home tech and getting your smart home going. And I have a couple other videos or a playlist linked here on the screen with some of those other topics. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.